I see mining on your gaming laptop or computer as such a special thing because that's how I started. And I guess most people start that way, so it shouldn't be that special, but it it's, it's what started me on my adventure. It's what got me so interested in crypto. You start small, you know, and sometimes you need that little bit of proof. Like, am I actually going to get some payment here? You get a little bit to your wallet. It keeps going over weeks, months, years, and you just, you gain that faith that it, yes, this is real. This is going to happen. You can make your money on a gaming computer. Now, is it going to be a lot? To be honest, no, but it's, it's something and it's something you can just turn on while you're not playing games or you leave it on overnight and it's really not hard. So I'm going to show you how to do this. This is not going to be like nice hash or something where it's just going to be a software that just turns on and just starts working, which I'll probably make another video about. There's a lot of really great programs that'll just do a bunch of things for you. The disadvantages of those is they're going to take a little bit of profit from what they do for hosting that software for you. You got to realize they're also converting a bunch of things for you. So it's not like it's a bad deal. Like they're always trying to change it so you're mining the most profitable coin or handling all, just all kinds of stuff. But mining on your own is easier than you think. And hey, you get to keep that little bit of extra percentage. And you can call yourself a real miner then too because you're actually mining straight to the algor algorithm. So I got you. Algorithm, algorithm, algorithm. I can say it. Without making you wait anymore, let's get this done. It really won't take long. I'm gonna be using Ethermine today, but I want you to know that what I'm about to show you is really gonna be translatable to almost any mining pool, okay? I, I haven't really seen any mining pool do it any differently. Yes, they might have a couple different commands, something like that, but what I'm about to show you is always going to translate. And the reason I'm emphasizing this is you gotta realize Ethereum is not going to be mineable soon. So you gotta be familiar with changing your pools and changing which coin that you want to mine because you are going to be changing. And I think that once Ethereum is no longer mineable, I do think we're gonna be kind of changing a bit more often. I think there's gonna be winners every month and who knows how it's gonna play out. It's gonna be interesting in my opinion. You can actually see on Ethermine, which is also why I like it, they have multiple different coins all right here. They even have Ravencoin and ERG, which I'm really happy about because I like ERG. But Ethermine is gonna have a big start mining. I'm gonna click on that. There's gonna be a bunch of information, but relax, I'm gonna explain all of it. I want you to download Phoenix Miner. I'm using Phoenix Miner because that's just what I'm used to. Let's see here, we're going to use Windows Zip. So you can see I just ran into an issue here. Um, I This is not the first time I've run into this issue before. And how you're going to fix this is... There, there, there's other ways, you can like unblock it, but I'm lazy. So just go to the same place but if you use like internet explorer they're gonna let you download it the reason it's saying it's dangerous is because this is custom software anything that's custom and i know this because i'm a software engineer and anytime i send custom software to somebody especially over google it bans it and it's like nope that's virus and i'm like it's not a virus it's literally like three lines of code to read an excel sheet but whatever no i'm just venting all right now let's grab this thing yes 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 just allow it Add. I'm on a server, which is why it's saying that. We're gonna save it, open folder. I use 7-zip, you can click extract all 7-zip, I just find it to be nicer. And you're gonna get a file like this. And here's something I'm gonna suggest. Where do you put these files? I don't know if I have it on this computer. I do, okay. So you can actually see right here, I in my local C file, I have a place called crypto. And here is why I do this. So there are some computers, I've had computers that give me issues with like um, firewall permissions or all kinds of security issues. And if you run into these issues, it's really easy if it's just on your C drive and you say anything in this folder, just ignore it. Um, so I'm just gonna move Phoenix Miner right here in my crypto folder because I have already stated on this computer that hey, if it's in the crypto folder, do not ban anything from here or delete any of the files because it will delete your files. It is super annoying. And I am giving you this kind of information because I want you to know that you're gonna run into errors every once in a while. Every person's gonna have their own issues with stuff like this. So just be prepared for it, but it's not a big deal. 
if you run into those issues. So here is where we're really gonna start. You see where it says start miner.bat? That's a bat file. You can click on it, you can click edit. Now, everything you saw from here, from the first site, this is what you're really gonna wanna know here. These are your locations for the servers. Honestly, you can choose any of them. I really suggest though you choose the one that's closest to you. I live in the east, so I use this one. And I'll show you an example. Remember, this is the new bat folder I have. And I'll show you my bat folder. And for anyone saying, oh my god, you're showing your wallet address. Yes, I am. So all you can do is send me money. And if you want to send me some Ethereum, that, that's okay with me. Anyways, even though it doesn't look exactly the same here, that's because I actually customized how um, mine actually works, because you can do that. So you can see right here, mine is actually choosing the EXE. This one is saying, hey, where's the EXE? It is asking, okay, what server are you using? This one's EU1. I don't want to use EU1, I want to use USA. And this is the wallet address. I'm gonna choose my wallet. Right here, it's usually gonna tell you like, um, what, what do you want the name of it to be? So I'm gonna say server. And that what it's gonna do is it's actually gonna show you that name um, under the website, you'll see. And SSL ports are they 555? Five, five. So they're giving you this information by the way because they want you to make sure that it's all right. Yeah, that looks right to me. I'm gonna click save. And I'm gonna run. Voila, you can see it's running. So it, you can see it really wasn't that hard. I actually could have made this video even faster. I just dumped a bunch more information towards you as I kind of remembered, hey, there's other issues you can run into and things that you should think about. I just started up my normal bat file that I usually use because now I want to show you something. So this is my wallet. And by the way, my wallet address, I'm using BlockFi personally. I, I mine straight to BlockFi. Um, sometimes the Celsius network and that way just goes straight to a liquidity lender and starts earning me money. Some people don't like that, but I mean, I, I like free money, so it's what I do. Minor address, I'm going to copy and paste this, click enter, and voila, you can see my current hash rate. And I do suggest though, if you use Ethermine specifically, um, that you go to, where is it, setting, payment method, and you can actually set your gas limit. So right now mine's at 0.11. I don't know why it is, I usually have zero. But 0.1 is the... Ethermine is changing things on me. The minimum now is 0.01. Not too long ago, it was 0.1. Okay, that's really nice, because that means I'm going to get paid more often now. Awesome. I'm cool with that. Totally cool with that. Anyways, set it to the minimum. It just means you're going to get more payouts. Now, do also be mindful that I showed you how to do AMD. There's also NVIDIA. Now, I, I did Phoenix Miner, because it can do either of them. So that doesn't matter. You're welcome. But there is one more thing that I need to show you about mining on your Windows computer. And that will be MSI Afterburner. MSI Afterburner is gonna let you overclock and undervolt your graphic card. If you are not doing this, you are just giving up free money. That's all you're doing. Is this gonna hurt your computer? As long as you're not stupid, yes, you're not gonna hurt your computer. And when I say as long as you're not stupid, there are so many guides online of how to do this. Each graphic card is different, so I can't tell you what to do for your graphic card. Um, you got to look that up, but people are going to give you safe, reliable numbers that they can get on average. Do not just grab these controls and just, you know, start putting it at maximum. You are going to screw yourself. Um, as long as you don't do that, you're fine. Now, the power limit is honestly the most important part here. 
you gotta realize that whenever you're mining, you can get the same results by lowering the amount of electricity you're using, which saves money on electricity, and you're still getting the same hash rate. So if you're not overclocking and undervolting, all you're doing is spending more money on electricity when you're getting the same hash rate as I am, but I'm spending less on electricity. So there is no reason not to do this. I also want you to be aware that when you go to fan settings, you can kind of see what I did. I This is how I set up my fan settings. Now, I, I have a bit more aggressive of fan settings because I'm personally wanting my graphic cards to stay under 75 degrees Celsius when they're mining. And I have plenty of extra fans, so I don't care if the fans die. But most graphic cards can actually handle much hotter. You don't need to keep it as aggressive as I have right here. But you can see what I do in general is wherever it says 50 for the actual fan speed, I'll match it to 50 for the temperature. And it will go up equally temperature to speed um, up until 60. And at 60, I have it go from 60 to 75, up to 70. And after 75, because that is my no-no zone, that is when it gets more aggressive and you're gonna notice that it gets higher and higher much faster at that point. So you can really set it to whatever you have. I just thought I would share the settings that I use personally. And last thing, when you do this, you just you can save your profile of whatever you set for your mining graphic card. And then when you wanna go back to gaming, just hit that reset button. That way you can go back and forth between gaming and mining whenever you need, because you actually might run into a lot of um, unstable results when you're gaming on mining settings, because these settings are meant to be for mining. And also, if you want to steal my MSI Afterburner results, this is personally for my 1070 that's on the server. So if you have a 1070, then yeah, I just gave you what you need. Aha, I found it. Okay. So if you don't know what block fee is, it's a liquidity lender, which literally means that they'll, if you give them, you know, they'll turn your dollars into stable coins and hold that for you, or you can send your Ethereum or Bitcoin or other coins into their system and they'll hold it like Coinbase. And then they'll use that money, they'll lend it out, get an interest, and then pay you the majority of the interest. That's liquidity lending TLDR simplified. That's why I personally mine straight to my block fee account. I also mine to my Celsius network account. I've actually been using both. And it just allows me to make money from the money that I've already made from mining. So if you're interested in doing that, I do have a block fee and Celsius network referral code down below that will give you free money. Uh, $10 on block fee and $40 on Celsius network. If you use that, that really helps support me in this channel. And hey, it helps you, right? I also know that right now a lot of my followers have actually come from TikTok. Thank you so much for the support and I've loved teaching all of you guys on my Discord server or talking to you guys on my Discord server and it makes me so happy when I can help somebody and then I get a picture a week, month or whenever later of the new rig they build and how proud they are and it, it, it really does make me happy. Like it, it means a lot to me that I can not only help people do this but the love and support that this community has, I, I don't deserve it. You guys are so amazing. I, I never thought in a million years I'd be in a community like this. So thank you. And hey, as you start mining on your gaming computer, I am so excited for you to put on the big boy pants of mining in the future and be like, I'm about to build my own rig. And then when you need to do that, I'm there for you. I'm going to help you with that. <laughs> We're going to do it. Oh, let's be a crypto Bitcoin millionaire together. <laughs> oh, we're totally not going to be sleeping on a couch for 10 years before that happens. Totally. <laughs> See you guys.